My name is Cheryl Miller, and I'm here today because I have a vision, and that vision is that girls are going to save the world. Yes. And I came to this vision as a kind of epiphany, almost exactly three years ago, when I stood in front of a group of 200 girls who had just completed a, a day full of workshops run by volunteers and mostly women, out of the famous science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM sectors. These were both amateurs and professionals who basically came for the day. To try to get girls interested in science and technology, there were also, as I like to say, some very exceptional men who volunteered, and this is important for the girls, of course, because it's good for them to know that men also want more girls in science and technology fields. So I stood there at the end of the day, among this group of 200 girls, 11 to 15 years old. And the feeling that I got from their beautiful faces, their excitement, their openness, their positivity, was, you know, if we could bottle this feeling, we could save the world. Now I know, right, I'm not going to get too political, not just yet. We know every day. I mean, we hear news about how difficult it is to get girls doing science and technology, and there's bad news, literally,、uh, in articles in the news all the time. Is it really a problem, though? Is it something that is impacting our world? Is it even real? Well, the fact is, yes. I don't want to bore you with the statistics, but only one in ten girls wants to study science. Only one in ten engineering students is a girl, and only two out of ten people working in the ICT sector, in the digital technology world, are women. Why? I like to say, and this doesn't answer the question as, at all, is that there are as many theories about why this is the case as there are real reasons for this being the situation. And what are those reasons? Are they social? Are they economic? Are they political? Are they moral? Are they physical? Are they mental? Yes, it's all of these things, which makes actually tackling the problem very difficult. And no one is an expert on it, and I confess that I'm not either. But does it really matter? Do we really need to have women in the ITC in the ICT sector? Do we need to have girls studying science? One of the most important reasons that's often given to have more girls doing science or working in the technology sector is simply very consumerist in perspective, and frankly, I hate it. Yes, we need more women in ICT so they can design products that women like. Right, the infamous pink it and shrink it phenomenon. No, thank you. That's not the reason that it's a problem. No, the real problem is, and I'm going to use a bad word, Ted. So I'm warning you that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And the discussions about fixing the problem, the discussions about making our world a more sustainable place for people, for our fellow creatures, and for the planet, is happening without any women at the table. And this. I frankly find very problematic. If women, half of the population, are not seriously engaged in designing and building the future, any outcome of that discussion is not sustainable by definition. Who agrees with me on that? Thank you. So, what's the solution? Don't worry, I've got all the answers right here. Obviously, it's about restoring balance, about getting more women at the table. And the research that we've already seen demonstrates that when we do this, when we empower women, there are 
economic advantages. There are moral advantages, emotional, everything. Basically, this doesn't even make sense that women are not involved in these kinds of dialogues, especially when it's about women. Now that makes me really mad. So, what have I learned in these three short years that I've been running hands-on activities, trying to get more girls doing science and technology? Well, the fact is that you have to start early, before the stereotypes start to kick in. Make them interested and excited about science. And honestly, how hard is it to make science fun? I mean, we're talking about blowing up stuff or breaking it and rebuilding it. And frankly, if our education system isn't teaching science in this way, then what are they doing? Right? When you do things that are practical, fun, social, hands-on, people learn. They get excited about it. Kids work this way. Girls obviously work this way. But frankly, we all work this way. So let's make it fun, and get girls excited about science and technology from a very early age. And the role of role models in this venture cannot be understated. As a fabulous woman named Gina Davis, who I hope you know. She's an actress and a humanitarian. She has started her own institute on gender equality or gender in media. As she says, if girls can see it, they can be it. But today, honestly, do they see it? These are some fantastic and beautiful women of science. What our girls see today is this. Nothing against these fantastic women, but there's definitely an element of the conversation that is lacking. We don't see women scientists. We don't see good role models for girls that might inspire them to want to become like that. So actually, and this is the heart of my talk today, is there's a bigger challenge out there. We have the problem of getting girls excited about science and technology, engineering and mathematics, but we have an even bigger problem. Am I right? I'm going to take the bull by the horns right now, so I hope I survive this. Think about how often our kids are engaged with material and content. That is coming out of the entertainment and media industry today: gaming, the internet, TV, films, books, and I like to say, are kids actually still reading books? I hope so. I guess if they have it on an electronic device, they'll probably read it. Is this so bad, though? The entertainment and media industry by 2016 will be a 1.6 trillion dollar industry globally, so all of our kids are impacted effectively. Yes. Now, how bad is the problem? I'm just going to do a quick little exercise with you. There's something online called the Bechdel test. You all can uh, put your own data into this into this database. It's about how to evaluate a movie. Three criteria: there have to be two women who are in the main character suite. They actually talk to each other about something besides a man. Okay? 2,500 movies and growing every day. Only half of all movies actually pass all three criteria. Now think about what that says about the entertainment and media's industry portrayal of women. As a start, the Gina Davis Institute has actually done very profound research on this topic, and I'm an advocate. I'd like us to do more of this in Europe for a start, 
and in the rest of the world, because it's about having that data to, to create more awareness of the problem. 400 top-rated movies, over a thousand kids' TV shows evaluated over seven years' time. Male characters outnumber female characters in movies and TV for children. Two to one. Even in crowd scenes. Now, this is clearly not normal. Pixar, 16 years, 12 films. Look carefully at the image. These are well-loved, internationally best-selling movies of all time. They never had a female lead character. Did you realize that? Until this summer. Very brave, very brave. Thank you, Pixar. Children's books, the most comprehensive study in the 20th century in the U.S. Again, we need to replicate. Male lead characters outnumber female lead characters in children's books. Two to one. It's a magic number. Even in animal books. Oh, come on, people. And then here's something that's the most sinister: is actually when we, as parents, as mothers, read these books to our children, even if the author has gone to the effort of making the characters gender, gender neutral, we actually assign them a male character. Now think about whether you've ever done this. So. We're part of the problem, and women even are part of the problem. Same study: women in movies and TV are hypersexualized. Now, come on, you remember the image I just showed you? Now, think about music videos, video games, advertisements, magazines. What impact is this having? On our children, our girl children, our boy children. Something else Gina Davis says is, the more children watch TV, the more boys become sexist, and girls lose self-confidence. Is this a surprise to us? This has to stop. Very simply. And if they're not hypersexualized, they are either daydreamers. They're girls who are only just dreaming of romantic love. I was going to give you images, but you all know the image. Derailed. I was on my career path, and wham! Oh yes, distracted and fallen in love. Or they're daredevils. I don't. I don't care about love. Honestly, are these the only roles? That women have in the world—it's a very narrow selection that we get to pick from. Now we need better stories about girls and women in media, and maybe some about women scientists, for example. Don't get me started. But you know, from the very top down, all the stories are actually written by men in movies, TV, cartoons, even. They're not only written by men; they're directed and produced by men, and music videos and all the rest too. But girls need positive role models. So where are these going to come from? There's actually a small study that demonstrates if we have female, even fictional female role models who are working in science, for example. You'll get more girls studying for real in those areas, so there is hope. In the, at the University of Oslo, 51 percent of the girls in the bioengineering faculty said they were inspired by TV and movie to choose that study direction. That's very encouraging. So even fictional role models work and can change the stereotype. So here's my idea. You ready for it? I hope it's worth sharing. How about 
building on what we know, young role models, etc. We get girls involved in the enterprise and media industries. We start skilling them with music production, um, graphic design, design in general. Why not? DJing videos. We stimulate their interest in science and technology, and we actually give them the chance. To change the conversation, to develop and deliver material that creates different role models and different stories. This is something that I am about to begin right now, and I think we can make a huge impact by doing it. I hope you're all on board. I hope you think this is an idea worth sharing, because you see, these kind of women, who come from entertainment and media, they are role models today. They are my role models. Imagine if just one of them was a Nobel laureate in science. And honestly, I hope they support this idea, because they can help to make it happen. There's a lot at stake. Don't forget this. But if we give girls the chance to get science, technology, engineering, and mathematics knowledge, and give them the chance to change the story and change the stereotypes, break the stereotypes, then we also give them a chance to save the world. <laughs>